Hey squad, welcome back. Now today I'm continuing my series on must know music production terms. Now I know a lot of you guys have gotten into this whole music production game and you're absolutely killing it on a creative level, but it's also important to have a good grounding on the terminology used within this field. Now today's tutorial is all about EQ terms and we're gonna cover terms like low cut filter, high cut filter, low pass filter, high pass filter, low shelf, high shelf, Q, parametric EQ filters, and a few other bits thrown in. So if some of these terms are new to you or you just wanna have a refresher, make sure you check this one out. Now the track I'm using to demonstrate in this video is a song I've currently got released on all platforms called Will I Ever Know? So why not check out the links in the description and help me out on my musical journey. Now let's get into it. Okay, so we're in Logic Pro X and we're gonna be using the Channel EQ plugin as our demonstration tool for this tutorial. Now let me play you just a section of the song that we'll be working on. Okay, so as you can tell, there are quite a range of frequencies in this production, and that's really gonna help in this demonstration. So let's dig into this. Over here, we've got the channel EQ plugin sitting on our stereo out channel. Let's click on that and open it up. Okay, now this is Logic's channel EQ, and it's the standard EQ that's gonna be inserted into every track you create in Logic. It's a great plugin in many respects, and it's really gonna help us to try and understand what some of these music production terms are in relation to EQ. So first of all, EQ, as we know, stands for equalizer. Now before computer music became popular, equalizers were actually physical hardware devices that did pretty much the same job. And also if you own a mixing desk, whether it be an old school analog desk or even a digital desk, they all come with equalizers, which are absolutely essential in shaping the tone and sound of your instruments. In fact, I believe the EQ or equalizer is probably the most used plugin or effect in music production. Okay, so what we're looking at here is Logic's eight band channel EQ. And what I'm gonna do first of all is I'm gonna make sure these two end ones are switched on. Now these are all different types of filters, okay? And I'll tell you what they are in a second, but we're also gonna switch on the analyzer. Now this is a spectrum analyzer which allows us to see the changes in frequency over time when we play back our music. And this is quite helpful for the demonstration at least. Okay, so what are these filters all about? Well, each of these filters, as I hover over each one, you will see that each one affects a given band of frequencies. By using these controls down here, we can select which frequencies we want to adjust and by how much. And I'll explain that in a minute. But first of all, let's make a note of the different terms or the names of the different types of filters. Now this first one here is called a low cut filter. It's also called a high pass filter. Okay, so either one will do. This one on the other end is a low pass filter or a high cut filter. Again, either name will do. Now in principle, this is what they do. Okay, I'm gonna play the music back and I'll show you exactly what this filter does. Okay, so what I've done here is I've adjusted the cutoff frequency for this filter, and I've adjusted it from 20 hertz down here all the way up to 400 hertz. And what has happened now is as a low cut filter, I've been able to cut out all of the low frequencies from 400 hertz and below, and that's why it's called a low cut filter. However, if we were going to consider it to be a high pass filter, the same thing applies. I'm allowing only frequencies from 400 Hertz and above 
to pass through so we can hear them. Let's try it the other way around. I'm going to reset this. I'm going to hold down option and click. Okay. And now we're going to do the same thing with the, the low pass or high cut filter. Again, in the same way, the high cut filter cuts out all frequencies from 500 hertz and above, or you can say it allows all low frequencies from 500 hertz and below to pass through. Now, as you probably guessed, when we look at this EQ layout, we're looking at what is known as a spectrum of different frequencies. Low frequencies or bass frequencies exist down here, high frequencies or treble frequencies exist up here. And in the middle, we've got low mid and high mid frequencies. And we have the flexibility of using the EQ to be able to adjust and shape all of these frequencies. Now, as you saw before, the top row of numbers represents frequency. That's our starting point, our cutoff point. Now down here is the slope. Okay, now if I was to move this along like so, I can adjust the slope as to how soft or how hard the cutoff is. You can change it and adjust the slope to your liking. And the same applies up here. Let's pull this down as such. And you can adjust us your slope like so. Okay, option click to reset. Let's move in a level. Now, now this one here is called a low shelf. And this one is a high shelf. Now the low shelf adjusts all frequencies from the cutoff point and below. So first of all, we set the frequency where we want to start, where we want the shelf to start operating from. Let's move it to 80 Hertz. Now this number right here is the gain. And this allows us to determine by how much we want to adjust. We can boost or we can cut, we can increase or we can decrease. Okay, so I'm going to switch off the low cut filter or high pass filter, and we're just going to focus on the shelf. Okay, let's play the music back and make some adjustments. Okay, so as you can see there, we were able to adjust all of the frequencies from the cutoff point and down by boosting or reducing the gain. This number down here is what's known as the Q. And this is similar to the slope setting in that it determines how many of the frequencies that are close to 80 Hertz will be adjusted as well. So again, like I said, it's a bit like a slope. So if I set the Q very low like so, frequencies all the way up here will be affected by this adjustment. So you get a smooth increase across the frequencies or decrease either way. Okay, let's reset that. Okay, let's try the same thing up here. We're going to switch off the high cut filter, low pass filter. We'll adjust the shelf as we go along. Okay, so as you saw there, I was able to add more brightness and more of a high frequency boost to all of the frequencies from 3200 Hertz and above. So this is quite a useful tool for adding a bit of brightness to your sound, to your mix. And again, you can see how I was adjusting the cue to narrow or widen the number of neighboring frequencies around the mark. The amount of cut or boost done by this gain control right here. So let's reset that again. So we've dealt with our low cut and high cut filters, high shelf and low shelf. And now in here, these are parametric 
EQ filters, sometimes known as peak or bell. And that's because if I was to do this, I'm able to get a bell type shape or a peak if I was to adjust the Q like so. And these are very, very effective filters that allow you to do some very powerful and forensic adjustment and shaping of the tone of your sound source. Now for the parametric filters, this represents the frequency that's at the center of the adjustment. So if we push that up so, and we adjust the Q like so, this point right here is the center. And it's the same for all four of these. The next row of settings represent the gain, meaning the amount by which you will increase or decrease at the center frequency. And then of course you have the Q, how wide or how narrow you want your adjustment to be, how many of the neighboring frequencies, neighboring to the center frequency, how many of those will be adjusted by your boost or your reduction. So now let's say for example, we had a bit too much uh, muddiness or low mid frequency in our mix. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to set a frequency, let's say uh, 370 Hertz. I'm gonna pull this down to scoop out some of those mid frequency, low mid frequencies. And I'm gonna broaden the Q a bit like so. Then I'm gonna slide around and sweep around until I'm satisfied that that zone or that set of frequencies are the ones that I want to reduce. And then I'll make some further adjustments here. So let's demonstrate that. We're working on an entire mix right here. So we're pulling out frequencies that are actually intended to be in there. This track is actually completed and, and released at the moment, but I'm demonstrating using this completed track. So you can hear how many frequencies can be pulled out and we can do the opposite. We can actually boost a range of frequencies as well. So let's do that again. Okay, so you get the idea. Now all four of these parametric EQ filters do pretty much the same thing and can operate anywhere along this horizontal axis. And that's it all together. And these principles apply not only to Logic Pro X, pretty much every EQ you come across in whatever door you're using, same principles will apply. And you also see very similar symbols such as these, which mean and represent the same thing, okay? Hopefully that makes sense to you. Okay, so I really do hope you found the tutorial useful and there's more to come. Now remember, if you're digging what I'm doing, make sure you drop me a comment, you like, you subscribe and share this video. It's always great hearing from you. And don't forget to support me on my musical journey. Links are in the description. Finally, don't forget, just like the rest of the MTTC squad, switch on your notification bell. So when my next video drops, you'll find out straight away. And until next time, I'm Dr. Deuce. Peace.